Well, good morning. It's Holy Week. I know it's hard to believe, but it really is Holy Week. We began today in hearing the triumphant journey of a 33-year-old Galilean who made his way through the streets of Jerusalem on the back of a donkey marked with a sign of a cross. People wave palm branches as we did today, but soon his world would be plunged into darkness as the meanness and the deceit set in. I, I thought about this journey uh, on my way into the building the other day. Paul was outside uh, doing cement work to prepare us to return. Uh, the steps and the sidewalks uh, are all being repaired in this downtime. And out of the corner of my eye, I caught the cornerstone, 1896. Since 1896, this building has stood. It was occupied by Union and then Zion, uh, who had its own internal issues. Uh, and then one day, uh, Zion became Zion Evangelical Lutheran. And eventually, we took over as stewards of this beautiful campus and have improved it dramatically. There are so many things that we've done that we should be proud of. Yesterday, my world was thrown into a little bit of chaos and darkness. It began with a warm wall to the touch and an electrical problem that could have been disastrous. We, we could have had a house fire. And then as we were cleaning from all of the dust and debris from the electrician's work, the faucet over the sink broke and we had water literally spraying into the air. And we had to clean that up and run and get a new faucet and I had to install it. And as you may know, I'm not the best at these things. But Tom was sick and I felt I could do it. And finally we accomplished it. Finally going to bed later than we had hoped for. And then about 3.18 this morning, a smoke detector battery decided that it was time to be changed. It, it wasn't a, a good 24 hours. It reminded me of a journey when I was a child. One of my favorite books was Hansel and Gretel. And in the story, there's a line uh, where Hansel and Gretel are walking into the woods and they say, it is very dark and we are very afraid. I think that's where many of us are right now. We're filled with fear, we're stuck at home. Schools are closed, flights are canceled, people are dying alone because relatives, loved ones, Spouses of 60, 70 years are not allowed in the room. People are literally dying by Skype or by FaceTime with those they love. College graduations have been canceled and the dead are being literally stacked to be blessed in mass by priests and pastors before they're buried. It's almost as if the tentacles of darkness have infiltrated every aspect of our lives. And that's why I felt that it was important for me to bring you this message of hope, not just for St. Miriam, but for all of Christendom. Whoever will hear my voice, we are not in complete darkness. Oh, I'm not trying to negate the time. The times are tough and we have a long way to go, but we will survive this just like that cornerstone that was laid in 1896 and over 2,000 years now, the church and parishes and buildings and structures have survived and been destroyed in all sorts of ways, but then have been resurrected and rebuilt. And that's what we're doing. And that's why it's so important that we focus on what happened to Jesus during this week. You know, Jesus in a very real way began in light. His triumphant entry today to the shouts of Hosanna brought great joy. And then just in a matter of a few days, he was hung on a cross to die because people deceived him and people lied so that he might die. But it wasn't over. The darkness did not overcome that moment. You see, 
in those few days that Jesus was dead, he descended into hell and he brought back all those souls that believed. And to this day, we believe in the communion of saints, the living and the dead. We are all loved so much. Even what Judas did ended in a moment of light. And that's why I think that this journey, this beautiful journey should not be missed, even if it's only by live stream or video. Our parish has done a lot to be here for you during this time, and we continually work every single day. Our live stream today was absolutely beautiful, and Holy Week and the Easter Triduum to come, Holy Thursday at 6 p.m., Good Friday at 3 p.m., Holy Saturday, the Great Easter Vigil at 8 p.m., and Resurrection Sunday, the day of ultimate light for us as Christians at 9 a.m. will be live streamed. And if you're here in the parking lot, you can tune in by FM radio and then go to confession if you desire for reconciliation or receive the sacrament. This moment of ours is our moment. It's our moment to show the world that there is still light and goodness. Jesus' touch brings light to the darkest of places. That's what Holy Week is all about. Our belief as Catholic Christians that no matter how dark our days, there is one whose light will always bring us to holiness. Continue to support and love us. Every single prayer, every single dollar is appreciated. It allows us to be us and to preserve this beautiful place so that one day when we return, we can celebrate all that we've been through, recognizing that Jesus gave us the ultimate light and the ultimate gift of eternal life. I wish you and yours a blessed Holy Week, and I look forward to seeing you in real living color soon. Please pray for me as your pastor, and I will continue to pray for you. God bless you, and have a blessed Holy Week. And in case you can't tell, I miss you very much. God bless you.